One second, one second, just give me...
ever might have fucked with me. But I, I did report a couple of the tweets because he asked me to, so uh, I, I'm trying to get it taken down. Because a couple of her friends were reposting it. What? Oh, okay. Ready, set, welcome to Digital Blackface, guys. It's your host, Poe. Um, welcome to a very special episode today with a lot of special guests. Um, I'm here with my friend, Mr. Random, also known as Single Player Carl, uh, from Twitter. And he has his own podcast, which I'm going to turn this over to him for a little bit so he can really just set the whole thing up. Carl? Yo, yo, yo. What's good, folks? How y'all doing? You happy? You feeling good? All right, so... Normally on my podcast, uh, Top Kick, I do it in a non-weekly format because this shit kind of rots my brain. Because when I di- when I deep dive on a topic and I want to look into something, I look into shit. I take leaks, I take archives, uh, and I-, I write down everything I see because this shit's important, especially when you want to try and have a conversation with people who like antagonizing us on a mm-hmm. regular basis. But when I come when I came across this topic here that we're going to be talking about today. I, I knew, ah, yes, this is the one thing that I can't talk about here because I'm somewhat of an irreverent shit poster. Be- between myself and Poe, he and I are probably the two best known shit lords between this group of people in just the like sphere of Twitter that we talk about. But he and I also two different cringe lords. So whenever we talk about shit, it has a specific, mm, I, would, I, I guess you could say, uh, expectation behind it. Uh, a, a level of intelligence, a clout behind it. It's like, you see this and you're like, all right, okay, cool, fine. But that comes with a reputation that also can sour topics we talk about. It's like if you were to post QAnon on something and it's like, oh, look at this shit that I saw from Mr. Ren. People are going to be like, nigga, I don't believe that. Also, I don't know if I can curse. Am I allowed to be uncaged? Yeah, you're allowed to be uncaged. Go ahead. Just... All you right. should turn up your mic a little bit, Carl. Yeah, yeah uh, chat setting your mic's a bit quiet. I've had people roast me about my audio quality, so I apologize. It seems a bit low. But, um... Man, you need to speak up. I'm even leaning forward into the mic. Hold on. Um, I can hear I can hear Carl pretty well. Yeah, but chat can't, so... I don't know if it's my Discord settings. Probably my Discord settings. But, um... Th- this topic... Oh, that's why. The microphone is down at 24. How's this? How better? A little bit more, bud. A little bit more? That's good. All right, cool. So this topic that we're talking about, which is pink billing. I think everybody knows what pink billing is, but if you don't, I'll give you a brief description. It's basically this entire thing that happens on, in any community, really, uh, a person who lives an alternative lifestyle, whether they be female or male, but just live a different way. You know, they, they decide to be a femboy. They decide to be a tomboy. They live a certain lifestyle, and somebody comes along and tells them, hey, you're actually trans. And they're like, no, I'm not. And they get bullied by an entire group of people, either on the internet or in their social groups or in their own political groups of people who they actually know, until they crack like an egg. And they come out of the egg, and they transform from this person who was just denying themselves all of, the, of what they could be, you know? You just come out of your shell and I'd be the pretty little princess that you were supposed to be instead of just lying to yourself and you'll be happier, you know? You, you, you do the top surgery, you do the bottom surgery, you get your cervix removed, you get your sex organs removed, and you'll just be happier, you know? It, it may not be the best perfect thing if you feel that you have dysphoria or even if you don't have dysphoria. It, oh, sorry. It, it, it's it, like it, something Dark Sidious would tell you, freaking... Yes, it basically imagine imagine that Darth Sidious is imagine Palpatine was telling Anakin and rather rather than trying to get him to go to the dark side, imagine he was trying to tell Anakin you're actually a trans woman. That's pink pilling. <laughs> the entirety of the Return of the Jedi is actually a very useful uh allegory to pink filling. And when he turns into Darth Vader, he's actually now a trans cybernetic woman. <laughs> <laughs> the god of analogy. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> and so knowing this and how serious this is, because even though we're joking, it's actually a serious problem. People have lost their lives over this. People's lives have been irrevocably ruined because of this kind of bullying. And there's really no way that they can be pushed back against it because a lot of the people who get targeted by this, in the research I've done just within the month when I started talking about uh, discovering this topic and then looking into it, a lot of them tend to be autistic. 
and if not autistic or very socially awkward, if not just very scared of talking to people in general. So they're very because, desperate to belong somewhere. Yes, some of them are. They're desperate wrong or they really hate themselves and they want to fit in. They want to at least feel normal. And these people who they call themselves egg crackers, they come along to push them into these communities because you just need, you need to consolidate. You need to be groups with us. You need to talk to us. We're here for you. And then when they do this thing, it becomes a power relationship where they are constantly bullied into following the the specific right way to be because there's supposedly a white a right way to be trans and anything outside of that is basically haram which and is incredibly it, counterproductive to what they claim no, i'm in <laughs> i'm in not oh hello oh he's back reading oh, hey. oh we got dimitri back dimitri. <laughs> hey dimitri god has blessed us once again okay fine carl you were saying but um Basically, they get bullied into being into these groups and circles, either because they do all these things and they still have this power dynamic, the egg crackers, over the people who were once eggs that have become trans because of this gaslighting. Because not only is it gaslighting, it's also quite literally holding them hostage with the information that because they have done this, that now they have power over them in all of their uh, social circles because it can actively affect you enough that it can ruin your life it can ruin your business it can ruin your relationships and it can just ruin you in general and when there are people who get who have this done to them when they get bullied enough it can actively push them to want to commit suicide there have been plenty of cases and examples of this and most people would just pass it off and say oh well that's that doesn't really matter it's just people making their own choices they knew what they were signing up for but it's worse than that because those people that I talked about earlier, the ones that happen to be autistic that this happens to, this is happening not just on a adult level. This is happening when they are children. Who here knows about Nesbin Naples? I do not. I can't say I have. I've never them. heard of them. So oh. Desmond Naples, otherwise referred to as uh, Desmond is amazing. Oh, 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 okay. well, oh, now we, oh my god. Now we all know. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, you get what I'm saying here, right? Yep. That's some shit that but nobody that's not, forced but, they, into. but you know, they will argue that he's not trans, he's just a drag kid. I, I would mean, say that it, to them, I yeah. would say that is a different thing. Um, I would could say they're tangentially related, but they're related. I, I would, yeah, I agree with that. I would say yeah. when I think of pink pilling, uh, does everyone here know Aby? Yes, that's yes. really the story yes. I think of when I think of pink pilling. See, I mentioned Desmond Naples because Devin Naples is probably the best case example that I could use to explain exactly why this is so predatory. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing to say, oh, well, Desmond Naples, Carl, actually, he's just a trans kid. He's just out here living his best life. And you're just pressed. Uh, sweetie, I don't know if I should be concerned more or less unless the child is pressed up against the ball sack of a registered sex offender and pressed up against all those men that he's dancing on stage for dollars for. Because I've lived in California. I know how it can one be. One of them convicted of murder. Yes. Yes, they are. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's smart to say, hey, we shouldn't worry about that. If his mother is doing this to try to live vicariously through him. And that is just the beginning of the hole that I've been going down while looking this up. Because to look into this problem is to start asking yourself some real questions about, you know what? Maybe, maybe I could tolerate talking to some people like this and understanding what the fuck is going on here. Because to talk about this problem, especially with the kind of visibility that I have, is not doing a service to discussing the actual problem here because everybody knows at least somebody even if they haven't talked about it openly who's been affected by this because this is like happening on a sub layer of society unironically to uh, all, all i've seen is like just the like the very like i'm not really like super into like the serious side of twitter so all i've seen is like the fringe of like what happened so like avi like we just uh talked about like um Twitter's the his Twitter is completely gone, and I just recently followed his new Twitter, and apparently like he was he, he said like he asked me to refollow because I honestly didn't know he was gone. I was just messaging him trying to DM him to join the podcast this week, and I didn't realize that the uh, Twitter I was <laughs> the Twitter I was DMing was completely just gone. And I, I, at first I thought he blocked me or something, but I did something. 
or he had unfollowed me. But no, it was apparently because all of these pink pillars had reported uh, him because him being a trap was so goddamn offensive to them or him not being trans was so goddamn offensive to them that I, they couldn't have it. I believe that was the first time A.V. Yeah, lost time, her yeah. account. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't I the recent the one. I think the most recent one was a bit more of a personal dispute, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Artie's Artie's correct, I believe. Okay. The one that you're referring to happened sometime last year around, I want to say either July, June, or August. That was yeah, actually... Then, yeah. yeah, that was an actual case of exactly how powerful these people are, because... Mm -hmm. But the problem with it is that you'd think, oh, well, it's just some subgroup of people who cares about the drama. A lot of these accounts are well-known people who actively yeah. engage in this abuse on a regular day basis. And because it happens in these places where people are not aware of it, because it's happening on that sub-layer of communication, where the only way you know about it is if somebody tells you, there's so much of it. That if yeah. you reveal them, they just like, okay, this person needs to go. Harass his account now. And 1,500,000 different bot accounts and accounts used by people in these circles come out of nowhere and report your account. And Release that's just, yeah. that's that's literally how Twitter works when it comes down to dealing with it. You might notice that even sometimes when some of us get banned, somehow I skate away from these. It's because I'm very aware that these circles exist, even though I don't know where they are. <laughs> they, 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 they understand how to utilize Twitter's entire rule system to ban a person because the way that Twitter works is that they're knee jerk. If you, if you report somebody's account enough, they'll be like, okay, shit, fuck, get rid of them. Okay, they're gone. Are you happy? Because they're scared. Like there was a podcast that was had Tim Pool talking directly to Jack uh, and, and Vijaya, Gadad, his he head of trust and safety. And I have constantly had conversations with members of trust and safety where i've told them listen do you understand how hard it is to deal with actual problems on this website when people try to harass other people when they consistently try to accuse people of things like pedophilia and lolicon and they try to assert that somebody liking anime is the same as someone pounding out a 14 year old child on a camera or even somebody soliciting photos of mega upload links of entire drop folders of child porn do you understand how hard it is to deal with this problem when people are allowed to conflate one with the other and how serious it is that it gets to the point that we can't even have conversations about this because if i talk about it you won't even listen to what i have to say because you have somebody who has a direct line to you to talk to your members on your board that will say nah nah you need to ban that account because they actually just annoyed me and that it'll be that'll be it that'll be over That'd be the end of my account. And I wouldn't be able to say anything about it again because the next time I bring it up, even if I have proof of it, it's going to be, oh, don't listen to them. You're just an all right troll Nazi. They just want to attack us. They want to harass us. Just report well, their account. And word, and yeah. be gone. Now, well, now we're in the territory of censorship, though. Yeah. Well, of course. For the They've always been for it. I want to add to yeah. just like all the bots and stuff. They're, on top of that, they're incredibly, incredibly, they know how to manipulate people. Like, they have got this down. Like, uh, something happened with my friend the other day, and they're trans. They have trans friends, and they got kind of disowned by several of her friends because she was associating with me and other quote-unquote traps. I personally kind of consider myself a trap. Not really. I kind of am on that line, but yeah. Um, they, like, even associating with someone like me, who is just more of an effeminate man than an actual cross-dresser, was enough to send them off the edge, right? Mm -hmm. yeah like i think what's important about this is like there's basically an entire rhetoric about around it um i mean you see that all the time with egg stuff they try to like associate the very idea of like they'll say something like oh if you play a female in a video game they'll try to connect it as like a trans thing um it's basically a lot of people seem to think pink pilling is like strictly blackmailing and i wouldn't say that to any degree a lot of it is just getting in the head of someone who is in a vulnerable spot and yeah. that's really what happened to me when i was quite a bit younger when i was questioning things it was just like oh you feel like that well this means x you should get on hormones you should do this and that um and unfortunately i was lucky enough to break out of all that and figure things out myself and i'm not uh, trans but a lot of people aren't as lucky I don't I don't know if your age is known to most people but like like rough age I'm in my tw I'm in my 20s like 20s. Uh, okay uh, 
lower lower end twenties. All right, because this this kind of thing was never a problem when I was younger. Mm-hmm. When I was going through like high school and like very my very early twenties, like this was not an issue, but it's an issue now, and it's getting worse. Is it cool yeah, if I uh, yeah. is it cool if I interject because I don't think I've really talked about my yeah, point of, of view on this whole thing. Absolutely, okay. go. yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a mix of some older uh, trans activists being blatant sexual predators. And some trans yeah. people who are kind of a little bitter that they weren't able to transition as kids. So they're kind of projecting that insecurity on the kids and they're living vicariously through them. And yes. some of the people that they talk to and they're like, oh, uh, you might be dysphoric, you might be trans, you might need to get on uh, hormones or you might want to get surgery. Some of that might legitimately be dysphoric, like kids who don't really know it yet. Or they're just kids who, as Dimitri said, like to play as uh, girls in video games, or maybe they're slightly effeminate. I feel like they're just living vicariously yeah. through them, and they either don't care uh, that they might be damaging some people, or that's part of their um, the part of the sexual thrill. Because some of these yeah. people are blatant predators. I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of, I feel like some trans activists on the left are sexual predators and i know this is going to get people really upset at me like i'm sure there's some on the right as well but some like hardcore trans activists on the left are pretty like blatant jessica sex offenders. absolutely i mean she's pretty big she's pretty big i mean yeah Everybody She's also of... fat. I would prefer if we did like Voldemort and just never brought her up. I mean, I've never really experienced pink pilling in that sense. I don't yeah. know if it's because I've always been a vocal political centrist. Whenever I've used social media, a lot of woke artists don't really like me because I associate uh, with people like Poe or Dimitri or Shimon Head or whatever or Chris Reagan. So a lot of them don't like me. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't know if I really experienced that. I, I guess I'm just lucky. Wait, did you just put me in the I'm... same like breath as Chris Reagan and Chew on Head? <laughs> he did. Yeah, he did. We're all head. we're all there. Okay. But um, Jane, I do, I do think you have a good point in that. Like, I don't even always think pink pilling is malicious. It's a lot of time it ends up just being projection. I feel mm-hmm. like. Like, obviously, no one acts with. No one does this kind of stuff with malicious malicious intent. It's just like they're really unless they are a predator. inept and really unaware of the damage they're doing. Yeah. And this part of that comes out of that desperation you were talking about, right? Like I, Yeah. I think there's oh. some people who are doing it with malicious intent. I've seen a few of those. I don't know if yeah. you have ever okay, noticed. Few, but I'm, not, I'm saying the vast yeah, 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 yeah. The thing is that I have seen some maybe you've recognized this too from the more nutty trans people that there are some who just really really in my experience there's some that just really really hate men and they say oh yeah man or so goes i'm a trans lesbian never ever co- oh, have any contact with men that's why i transition i hate this i have that and blah 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 that is a pretty interesting choice there's it seems really, like really some of these big, there's a really large amount of sexism in some of them and it is interesting and also disturbing it, it makes me wonder where that comes from it seems like some of these people who transition are either misandrist or maybe they have like some like yes, white yes. or male guilt. That's a little interesting. Male guilt. I think <laughs> I, I don't disagree. I don't, I I don't want to see what major male guilt will do to a man then in that case. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, things, some of them have, have made very bad experiences, I guess, and they are they are making this very black and white thing and I feel like the way that and then there's is, others who I feel like the way yeah. the sexes or the genders on social media interact, it's very broken and it's not conducive. Because a lot of women, because some women genuinely do suffer like uh, institutional like se- sexism, they like pin that onto every man ever. And then a lot of men, they pin like misandry on women. So it's very broken. I don't think the sexes know how to talk to each other. And I feel like a lot of the hardcore feminists are just making it harder for boys because in some ways i feel like it might be kind of hard for young boys growing up oh yeah uh, absolutely yeah. and vice versa yeah. oh, uh, every, everyone uh i work with right now who is not over the age of 30 is completely black pilled when it comes to uh just other gender relations like 
I'm I'm being serious. Like they no, no, no. Of... I'm not. I'm not laughing because I think you're like wrong. I'm laughing because that's the reality of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is. And they're just like all they talk about is just like they're just talking about their friends that go to college and just how depressed they are and how the only thing that really gives them satisfaction and life anymore is the paycheck they get every Wednesday and like drugs and alcohol. Like it's really really sad how. People are struggling to find something that we, as animals, and furthermore humans, as social creatures, like, we need. We need, like, compassion and love and all these wonderful things, and we're being deprived of it, you know? Like, it's it's sad to see. A big There's part of this is fundamentally how social media works, because social media is inherently a low-empathy state. Mm -hmm. uh, with social yes. media, for everyone, <laughs> you kind of miss the facial cues and a lot of the social cues, and this goes beyond just me. Not just because I'm autistic, It is but for a everyone. playground for autistic people. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone on the fucking internet is autistic. But I'm not going to lie. I think you... half the people in this room are autistic. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, yeah, I've, never, I've, I've, never I don't, I've never checked because I don't need that extra uh, trouble to deal with. But, oh, it's uh, not trouble. It's pretty freeing once you find <laughs> out you are. You figure out why the fuck you were so weird your whole life. <laughs> like, oh my know. god, it makes sense. Or, like, um, I'm not gonna, uh, there's just this little bit that I noticed. Like, you've heard how all, like, the Final Fantasy remake came out, right? Like, you've all, some of you might have even bought the game. But there's this, uh, there's a part where uh, Cloud dresses up as a girl to infiltrate a scene. And, well, that um, was in the original game from 1996 honey, or something. Actually, he yeah. is a trans woman. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at the end of the and expressive of just how broken he is inside. Look, My favorite Look. representation, forced <laughs> cross-dressing. Look, I saw one. Someone made a tweet about that scene and took the original. And um, there was a, there was a part where Eris from the original screenshot says, Cloud, why don't you dress up like a girl? It's the only way. And basically took that to write a whole thread on how Eris was trying to crack uh, Cloud's it's egg it's because she could see it. Because, because she could see it. Because she could see it. How Cloud is just a deep bottle of and she's just trying to come out of his shell. And how Eris is just trying to help him, but Tifa would not let him. Are you actually quoting the post? Is that what it said? No, no, no that's right. the energy that their post had. Because yeah, my well, brain no, right, but I write. It. Yeah, yeah, and that's <laughs> what I was asking. Because literally, like, it was, she, she was pulling threads out of nowhere. And I was like, she f created a whole, a whole thesis on how Eris was secretly working to improve Cloud's life and to get him to embrace his true feminine, uh, his true trans self. And I was like, and I honestly felt like clapping because it was beautiful in how crazy it was. It was the ultimate shit post. It was it, literally. I could have. I could have done that ironically, and I would have. I would have like literally. I would have still accepted it from myself if I did it ironically. But seeing someone do it and believe it was amazing to me. The lines yeah, between reality and shit post is so blurred. R real talk about cloud. That 4K peach fuzz makes me so fucking horny. Cloud's mm -hmm. so hot, dude. <laughs> so it only made you horny because it was in 4K. You, you had to see all 4K of those pixels to get you horny. Uh. You know, they don't make 4K in real life. It's not going to look that good. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's also shit that's like the VG 24-7. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Those made. I just found my tweet, and it's like going back into a time machine from April 14th. It, they wrote an article about them boys are the new video game hero. And they have- Did we picture. talk about this on your stream when I went on it? Uh, I don't think we did. I remember it. Okay, go on, sorry. Probably not. Um, I, they were making this entire thing, and um, let me open this up. Uh, Pope, can I send this to you so you can put this on screen? Oh, so it's a burner. Burner, okay. Because I have a whole, you, you know I have a whole folder of this shit. So. Yeah, you, I'm definitely sure of it. I've actually, I've, I probably sent you like three links already, and ah. I, wasn't, I wasn't sure where I could send it to. Okay, no problem. Let's, what I'll were you talking about? Uh, oh, I was saying that this social article. media is inherently a low empathy state because it removes a lot of the social cues and a lot of the cues you get from talking to a person face to face and a yes. lot of people on the internet are kind of jaded and they're kind of primed to assume the worst about someone that goes for communities like uh kiwi farms but uh, in general with like the attitude that a lot of uh people have with feeling on the internet i've experienced it a lot not even just in political fights but i'll get in like a minor argument with someone and they'll assume, oh, uh, Jay must think X or act like X because they're primed to assume the worst. So I think that ties into why the trans community is so 
vicious because mm -hmm. the trans community is one of the most <laughs> angry, the most like hateful internet sub communities I've uh, interacted with. Oh, I a hundred percent agree on that one. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ! Like, I'm I'm on, I'm especially on, I'm there's like this weird fucking hatred that the community has against yeah. feminine men. Like it's like, so all the fucking time. weird. Yeah, all the time. All it took was me making like a video being like, oh, I like using the word trap for femboys and uh, sometimes people call me it. And now I have people harassing me for two years now because of said video. You know what's funny? I'm on like 50 turf block lists and I'm not kidding. Chances Same. are if you go, if chances are if you go on a trans person on Twitter and they have the pick through avatar or a trans <laughs> flag in the background, I am auto blocked by them. And the only thing I can think of is I talked to another animator friend and I said uh, something about non-binary people and I guess I just got placed on 50 block lists. But awful, on that note, remember when Glinner got a freaking picker avatar? Yep. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh. I'm envisioning he like wakes up every morning and he's like uh, ignoring his kids and he's like, no, I need to rant about, I need to rant about the trannies on Twitter. I can't do something useful like water the lawn or write a script. I have to rant about trannies. These are the important things. You gotta, you gotta you know remember. What? I gotta say something like, I've always wondered, just like, I'm really, I've always wondered how come it was so hard, why people were just like, internet drama was so common on just Twitter and everywhere. Because, like, to me, I always, I always should be shown people because it's easier for me to show empathy online than it is in person. Um, Understandable. Yeah, so, um, literally, I've always wondered where all the internet drama came from. So I guess understanding now, realizing that, uh, that description, how social media is a low empathy place, I can understand it. Because I, I have to work a lot to build my empathy in real life. So it's just a lot easier for me to practice that in person when I well, don't get, I think when it I don't might get annoyed just be by the, people. It might just be the specific communities that me and Dimitri and Artie interact with, because I interact with a lot of uh, trans people, a lot of artists, and a lot of artists love to cancel other artists. This is something very yeah. strange I've noticed about like a lot of artists. Community. They are very pro censorship, which is very of, weird. If you think about it, it's a weird point of view for a, an artist to have because yeah, art right? is human you expression. Yeah, right. feel like it'd be the opposite. Sorry, but I've had a bunch of animator friends just straight up get canceled. Some of them blacklisted over Twitter drama. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Like mm -hmm. every single day, I see an artist canceling another artist. Like they're so out for blood. The art should be a meritocracy. It should be artists helping fellow artists and. On Twitter, at least, that's only the case if you completely agree with them in lockstep. And I'm probably more left than not on most social issues, yet a lot of these the artists refuse to associate with me. And I know of friends who are pretty left-wing who've gotten canceled. But so uh, I interject as a, as a musician. I also notice this quite a bit. Um, oftentimes, uh, musicians don't want to, like share their work or get nervous about posting their resumes uh purely because of rapists actually because so many soundcloud rappers steal just random stuff they find and use it as you know a background feed. did, did you say rapists you say rapists <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> I wasn't mean, do you mean, I wasn't do you mean rapper anything. actually rapper yeah rapper. Yeah, yeah. i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm gonna shoot myself in the head anyways um <laughs> Damn. Right. I was just saying that it might just be the specific communities that me and Artie and Dimitri interact with, because the ones that Poe interacts with might be nicer, but at least with, like, artists, they like to cancel each other. A lot of people have gotten, like, blacklisted or canceled. Um, yeah, I mean, was, with my... Get famous off of posting the most obscene stuff imaginable? Who? Yes. That's wholesome in its own way, though. Who that's, got... That's, what that's were you talking head. about, Dimitri? We're all experiencing it together. <laughs> You all get the supper. That's how it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't quite catch but, uh, that. What was Dimitri talking about? Bo. I made a I made a joke that what Poe what Poe posts. Oh, okay. Is look, look. Yeah. I mean, I think what I do post is wholesome because once you see the, the true degeneracy, you can only appreciate mm, what is wholesome yeah. even better. It's maybe wholesome to low ping, but not many other people. Don't show what. That's because it's only wholesome to low ping. And you will not survive the winter. That's just why that is. Look, I help now, people. I love I get watching them. men getting caught in a lathe. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> how I wake up. It's fantastic. <laughs> I don't drink coffee anymore, but hopping on 4chan and seeing some Rex videos really gets my blood pumping. I mean, yeah, it does for me, too, but I don't expect it on my Twitter feed, my man.
is strange in I expect it when I, mean, I go to 4chan. I mean, you kind of do now. You kind of do now. I think I grew used to that when Loping started posting like Bowser Dick a couple of years ago. No, Loping really That's not that strange. Loping is who taught me. Loping inspired me. Loping cracked my egg. <laughs> I take that back. I take that back. Uh, so oh, that's how you pull it all together. Uh, that sounds really bad. That sounds really bad. Yeah, because when I first started talking to Poe, he was just talking about politics. But somewhere around like eight months ago, when Bowping got banned again, Poe just started posting fucking cringe like crazy, like people getting their dicks cut open or like people eating the head of a donkey. Like, oh, John okay, see, I know like, why. I know. I know why. Eight months ago, I was I very, I was annoyed with a lot of things going on. I was like, you know what? What can I do? Oh, no, I remember. I was sick. I had the flu really bad for three weeks. So I was like, you know what? I just, I just want to make people feel really sick too. So I was like, I just post a bunch of random shit. <laughs> so that's like that, your, that's that like is, your villain that story. <laughs> kind of. I, I had the exact same villain story. Sick. I literally <laughs> couldn't get out of bed. I was like dying. I was like, you know what? F Twitter, let's make some people throw up. Would like, that make your own you illness just... like worse? Like, no, I yeah, enjoyed it. You get well, stronger. Trust me, no. You guys, the reactions I, I got say... made me feel better. Because I, I, like, I avoid Twitter, so I don't see like anything raunchy or anything. So oftentimes, just makes me a little bit more sick. I'm just like, no. See, oh. I, I got used to that stuff when I was like 12 years old. I got used to that stuff when I was 12 years old, but I know a lot of people that didn't. We did get off topic, didn't we? We well, I was just saying it might be making. Right. Back to, uh, okay. Back to it might be make. It might be making right. Poe more resilient. Like it might be building up like his immune system to cringe. By posting all that cringe, it's building his immune system. I mean, it's made me stronger. I can handle more now ever since I started following Poe. Oh, same here. I'm just saying. Like... <laughs> uh, back on topic. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Okay. okay. To, to, to wrap to wrap it back to uh, being on topic. Um, my entire origin story for ending up making Top Kick and also making my community stream that I had did yesterday last night was the same thing. I, like I sat there looking at Twitter one day, like right after some smug drama happened. That's a whole topic. We don't have enough time to even begin to get into that. We really don't. Let's 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 avoid it. Let's That's avoid it. Gonna go, I'm gonna go drink bleach and what? fake attempting suicide and go let's, you know, let's avoid guys, 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 come on. Let's avoid that topic. Let's but I was sitting there, I was sitting there, I was sitting there thinking just about the shit that happens. And like, I was wondering, hmm, is it ever possible that even with how annoying people can be on the internet, can someone be able to give them the ability to sit down and look across from each other, despite the fact that they can hate their fucking guts and just sit down and talk about a topic that is important or just shoot the shit and breeze and get to know one another instead of them having this vitriolic hatred for each other. And I sat down for a long time thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? I could do that. And that's how I ended up making Top Kick. And that's also how I made it, uh, ended up making Fireside Cringe. And when I ended up finding all of this shit for this topic here that has brought us here today, I was like, ah, this is exactly what I need to do. This is what I'm here for. Because I thought about it for a long while after looking at all of the things that ever discuss anything on like being culture critics and shit like that. There is no one that is doing it in any general style like Poe does or like I do because people don't want to see it they don't want to hear about it they don't want to talk about it it's taboo it lives in a place where if you talk about it it's going to be one of those things it's like oh man that guy I don't want I don't want it no I don't want to look at that bro come on and it's it, what better could I do with my time other than do that because the best thing that we could do is bring ourselves together it, it's it's kind of what quinge does you know you sit there and you talk about the things because everybody experiences them in one way or another right and no matter what topic it is doesn't matter if it's anime doesn't matter if it's video games doesn't matter so if it's confused. politics you, you you just you sit down and you think about it and you talk about it and eventually over time you start being able to handle it and it's really important for a topic like this because if you don't talk about pink billing the shit will continue to happen People will continue to get harassed. Oh yeah, people that's, will continue that's a... to not have an outlet. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get. I I mostly get most of my shit just from like whenever I talk about pink pilling because I mean it's what I said earlier. I don't think it's always malicious. I just think it's something that needs to be talked about because in the same way that, um, it's basically the LGBT generals where they see someone that's effeminate and they think they must be trans, or they see a woman who's a masculine and think they must be trans, or vice versa. But it's like, that's just something that should be talked about because it is a problem, even if it's not hugely widespread. 
But the second you start talking about it, you get being called transphobic or like you're trying to do this and that, like you're trying mm-hmm. to tear down the community. But no, you're just trying to bring attention to like, for lack of a better term, like the That's, bad uh, eggs within it. Exactly. That's a really good exactly. point. <laughs> yeah. That, like, that actually speaks to something I've noticed within the far left. Uh, I, I, can let, I can let Carl speak if he wants to, but I was just going to say that that kind of speaks to something I've noticed within the, the far left where they won't let you call out certain issues because they think it's going to help the opposition, absolutely. even though there, exactly. should absolutely be, there should absolutely be more left-leaning voices like me. Like The only left-leaning people on social media who I see who call out the, the shit are sometimes shoe on head and ray gun really. And that's about it. Mm-hmm. But exactly. uh, in regards to issues like uh, how just because a lot of black people face racism or prejudice, it doesn't mean it's okay to be racist to white people or same with uh, being sexist to men because of women or issues within the trans community regarding predators and pink mailing. It's not okay to point out that stuff because they feel like it's helping the opposition. And I get Mm -hmm. why they think that is, but that's because they silence and they gaslight all the people on their side who try to call that stuff out. I feel like the left, the left trans community needs to kick out a lot of the predators. And that's something on the right that they seem to do right is that they kick out a lot of the bad actors. The left doesn't kick out a lot of their bad actors. Uh, I can let you continue. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, no, that was a good point. That's a good point. To build on Prime example of this is Gun Girl. I haven't heard from her in forever. Oh, Caitlin Bennett. Oh. Yeah, we, we recently... <laughs> she's, she's still milking the the poop meme. She's still milking that. Excuse me. Uh, poop meme? What? Oh, uh, you haven't seen it? She she no. shot herself at a party. Oh, no. oh my god! No, wait, that, that's actually don't look it up. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. That's not the one in the hot tub, is it? Like, that's actually no, it's not, not her. It's actually not her. I'm like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Guys, that's actually not her. I've talked to one of her friends. He was on the podcast. And that's actually not her. But she does kind of uh, still... Uh, she just doesn't say anything about the meme because she knows saying anything will, will just keep it going anyway. Yeah, she posted something like last week where she was with um, Alex Jones. And she was talking about Alex Jones would eat ass. And I'm like, oh, so you're just leaning into this now, bitch. Okay, all right. <laughs> I see you. But to build on what Jane's ass. saying... To, to build on what Jane's saying, Jane is absolutely correct because the way that they view it is very, very important to understanding why it continues to be a hot button topic that no one is allowed to talk about. The way you have to understand it is that a lot of these activists and a lot of these people in the circle, whether because they are willful, because they are allowing it to exist, because they're being doormats, because they have a platform and they have been co-opted in a lot of a way that they are being controlled both either subvert either overtly or subvertly no something interesting with a lot of left-leaning uh people i talk to is a lot of them are still left-leaning but they're more silent about their more centrist leanings like you'd be surprised how many of the how many of the left-leaning people you see me talk to on twitter You'd be surprised mm-hmm. how many of them are actually a little more centrist when you talk to them, and they're more afraid of either calling it out and helping the opposition or being hurt. So a lot of left-wing people actually do want to call out the stuff. They just don't want to either go against the mob or help the opposition, but uh, he can continue. Yeah. I just felt like it yeah. was important to say that. No, I was getting there. It, it, it either it, it's, it's, it's a very complex issue to get into, but it's, it's kind of like three sides of the problem. You have the trans people who want to be left the fuck alone, or people who are leftist, who consider themselves lefty, who consider themselves liberal, whatever they want to call themselves, that are in this spectrum. And they just have, they have thoughts. And they know that if they talk about a specific topic at any time, that if they say something that even sounds like it would help somebody who is either actively targeted opposition or is just somebody who's out there, kind of like, say, Jessica Yadid that they could be used as a weapon against the lobby, against the group, against the establishment itself. They will stay silent because they would rather not have those problems. And then you have the people in the middle, like Jessica and Eve, or any of the people who actively use the trans status or the trans uh, movement, the actual power that it would have politically, whether that be socially by people being canceled or it be 
in dust industry wise by being able to kowtow a business like YouTube, not even specifically just on the trans basis, but just the gay basis, you know, somebody walking up, oh, I don't know, like say Carlos Maza on the uh, uh, on, oh, on gay God. pride month and okay. saying, hey, this man, he is abusing us and he's been doing it for years and I cannot stand it anymore. And going to someone like YouTube and saying, you need to destroy him because that's mm. what you should do. And they say, uh, we didn't actually find anything wrong. Help, help, <laughs> I'm being harassed. They are not a supporter of the group. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, it, and it becomes that kind of thing. Where they use it Random as a pause for that autistic screech. And, and, and they, yes, thank you. I am. I that was an awesome re. As a fellow autist, I can say that was a pretty accurate. <laughs> really speaking uh, my language re. here. <laughs> yeah. Look, I feel like the buyer would much. probably say that was pretty accurate it's, too. It, it's it's one of those things where you'll have people who either they're political activists in the middle, or they're just people who are out there who happen to have collected this this kind of power around themselves, like. Mags Visaggio of uh, Marvel Entertainment, who likes to sit up and say for Sweet Beans 99, otherwise known as uh, Mallory Jessica Oh, that girl. Her. The oh, girl. Raise your hand if you're blocked by her. The, uh, the author of Manic Pixie Nightmare Girls, who will say, not only, huh, actually, it's really good that PewDiePie got robbed. That fucking guy, he, that chud has so much money. And then we'll also then follow up by saying, <laughs> guys, come on shoplifting is not that big of a deal i used to do it all the time when i was a child i used to do it all the time as a teenager and then draws a one-to-one -one accurate wheel, model wheel. and then draws a one-to-one -one accurate model of the blake's art studio that can be found in seattle washington where you live mallory <coughs> would you I want noticed. me to uh, interject you, about my experience look. with mallory because i was friends with her for a couple years on you Twitter. were friends oh, with her oh, oh i want to hear this oh, i want to hear Ooh. this yeah. Come on, Jay. Come on. Let's tell us. Uh, the beans, if you will. So a couple <laughs> of years ago, because uh, like every other person in animation, I read Curtain Brew, which is a prolific animation site. Uh, the owner, Ahmed Almidi, is actually kind of a bull cow himself. Like, he was directly responsible for the rise of Bronies, and he covered for, like, John Kay. Um, but a couple of years ago, he, like, posted some article uh, about female directors in animation, and I just commented saying that I had been reading articles on that site saying that a lot of studios were hiring more women in showrunner positions. So the guy in the article getting upset that there weren't immediately more women might have been a little misleading because it would take a couple years uh, for people, for women and in, in animation to get uh, leadership positions because a lot of it is based off of seniority. And I'm not arguing if it is or isn't a meritocracy because i don't have that experience but i commented that and mallory saw it and i was like 15 at the time she called me like a sexist and i'm just afraid of being a white man uh, this was before i had what? come out as trans <laughs> oh okay i, I thought like she a, was trying to say you're faking it which is was just even more absurd but a couple oh. weeks later she followed me and she's like oh oh uh i i like your art a lot uh, and I'm like, oh, cool. So we talked a little bit, and it was perfectly fine up until about a year later uh, when I had got about a 1,000 followers. This would have been about 2018. This was when I came out as trans. This is when I started talking uh, to, like, Dimitri and stuff. But, That's me. Uh, yeah, I'd openly been retweeting Ben Shapiro, and <laughs> Mallory <laughs> replied to it. And she's like, why are you retweeting Ben Shapiro? He's a notorious transphobe. You're literally killing trans people. And I'm like, I don't agree with his stances on transgenderism, but the specific tweet I retweeted was something about gun rights, which I completely agreed with. You can't resist the facts and logic, dude. And, and she was just like not having it. And a couple of her industry friends, because Mallory is extremely well connected <laughs> within the animation industry. She knows a ton of people. I don't want to name names, but uh, one of her industry friends replied to me, and she basically started calling me a sexist misogynist. And I think another one of her friends was like, uh, it isn't even worth it to try to convince bigots to stop being bigots. Once someone's a bigot, they're always a bigot. You can never change them. And they're like equating you to a Nazi. Yeah. And then Mallory called me a Nazi, and I'm like, uh, this is a little <laughs> uh, fucked up. Uh, you're calling me basically a Nazi over who I retweet on Twitter. And she basically called me a transphobe, and she said, oh, James Trans, which he's actively working against other trans people, which is not what I was 
uh, doing. So eventually she blocked me and a couple more of her friends were basically going at me. I think she vague tweeted about me. Uh, I think I found out that she had drove, driven an actual industry person at Cartoon Network into attempting suicide. Uh, she like had she had um. several of her followers <laughs> go to them on Tumblr and message them telling them to commit suicide. And I basically said, that's not okay, that's fucked up, and I think she blocked me for good. I later ended up getting uh, in drama with that person, but that was basically my experience with her. She believes all this stuff, she's incredibly far left, all her friends are other cartoonists or industry animators or um, like Tumblr cartoonists. She's very Tumblr. deep into that ideology. And I recall her tweeting about how uh, her group of friends were enabling bad behavior, but it seems like she hasn't made any effort to stop mm -hmm. that. But my experience with her is that Carl's assessment of her is pretty accurate. She's a pretty broken person. She's pretty abusive. She's like 40. Uh, oh yeah, her, she was really? Hold on, I did not know this. Wait, 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 now that is such sweet beans. I just got a full body massage, but holy shit. <laughs> yeah, she's my fucking dad's age. That's pretty w weird. She's like my dad's age, and she's freaking out about 16-year-olds retweeting yeah, Ben Shapiro. See, when I first saw her comics and stuff, I thought it was just some stupid fucking kid. But it went, yeah, it I was, it was, was like wild to me. Yeah, exactly. It was wild to me when I was choosing her late 30s. Well, a lot of the industry friends that were yelling at me, they're in like their 20s and 30s. Jesus Christ. Now that makes sense. Because I will say right now, <clears throat> if you actually saw a picture, because I've talked about her twice in two different videos. One was involving the shit that well, she Well, she actually said. passes pretty well. She's pretty cute. Yes. That's, yeah, I was about to say yeah. that. Like, you would not believe that that was 30. What, how old is she, actually? I think she's 38 or 39. Yeah. Well, I, <sighs> I, I would have pinned them for 24. I would have pinned them for 24. My money was on like 20. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like they look that young. They certainly it's actually, acted too. It's actually, great. it's actually great. Hey, we hey, see we're not all. Maybe, maybe the head keeps keeps are young. Maybe the head keeps are young. I'm misogynist. The don't, head, don't, look, don't speak for everyone, please. Look, okay, look. To be honest, I'm a little bit of misogyny. I'm a little bit of misogynist. Just a little bit. Like I like a little sprinkle of misogyny on my breakfast. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just, just a dash. Oh, I don't know. You, you, you tweet about hating women a lot lately. Well, because to be honest, <laughs> just to be honest, I hate fucking women. Okay, you well, have more feminine men in this well, chat than you have, have biological women. I have. Yeah, that posted, is also true. I have posted a lot about hating women recently, but in my defense, I'm a biological woman. I just in my defense, in my defense, <laughs> in my defense, women. women. Am I right, fellas? Am I right? <laughs> Like, like, listen, 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 I'll say this for real. Like, we don't mean to call y'all bitches, but sometimes y'all bitches be acting like some bitches. Okay? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Like, <laughs> like I, I have a heart. It's tiny and shriveled and black and dark, but I have one. Like, a little raisin. Up, like, straight up, let's put some respect on the name of the top woman disrespecter, Mike Headley. Oh, Mike. Mike is my Mike is my, Mike is my like, if he asked me to get a drink right now, I'm going to drive to Canada just to get a drink. He wanted who? me to do I, I don't know who this ago. is. Who's Mike? Mike? Mike, like, dude, the dude, if you come at him, he's gotten uh, suspended like 23 times. Because if you come at him, he will rust your entire life. He will just... <laughs> he holds nothing back. Like, the... some, some of the things he says are terrifying because... Like, I, I'm like, Mike, you literally can't say this. You will get suspended in five minutes. And you're like, it happens, it happens. And he gets suspended just all the time. Living life on the edge. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta choose. You got to sometimes, because people forget oh, that you're about that life. Like, no, no. Pull that card. There was, there was an Indian or Middle Eastern girl who had an OnlyFans who was coming for one of his old pictures when he was, like, still, like, way bigger. But he lost a lot of weight. And... She roasted him for it, and he was like, 
Oh, I'm surprised that uh, you're talking when the fact that you got an OnlyFans means your family could have killed you like two years ago. <laughs> I remember seeing that. That was some shit. But and I, I will, getting... I will, yeah, we're way off topic. We're getting a little, little off topic. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, to wrap back around to the point that I was making, there are, as I said, there are three types of people. There are the people who don't want to be involved in this shit and have no problem with trans people in general, whether they yep. are trans or they are affiliated with trans. They don't care. They just want you to live your life. That's pretty much the standard of what used to be the 80s and 90s movement with gay rights and acceptance. Shout out to Aaron in the chat. Shout out to Aaron. (laughs) And then you have the people in the middle, the activists, who even if they happen to be trans or they are affiliated with these groups where they are socialized, they use the industry power of being able to say, actually, you just hate trans people to use that to silence people who they disagree with because it's politically expedient. It's financially lucrative. There is no way you can say that they're not because it's like it's like it's like the reverse Godwin's law. When you mention that they might be a misogynist or that they are transphobic, it's an instant win card because the the normal thing that mostly happens is like you're a Nazi. No, I'm not. Okay, prove it. Uh, no, I don't have to prove it. Look, and that's look, the of it, right? Look, I've gotten called like uh, I simply every time I was like, oh, you're a Nazi. Oh, you hate women. Oh, you hate black women. Oh, you. I, I'm like, yeah, I do. Yes, what are you gonna do about yes, it? Yes, what are you gonna do about yes, it? No. What are you gonna do about it? Yes, and. Yeah, normally if you, lean, if, you, if you lean into it, it's like, what what can you do? Like, okay, and who, who fucking cares? But if they have they, nothing at that point, because yeah. if you just submit to it. Well, yeah. the goal when a far left person calls someone a Nazi is not to have a genuine argument about their beliefs. It's to get them to shut up and go away because they yeah, know exactly. it's a comeback that you can't argue against. Because if you argue that you're not a Nazi, their, their pushback is, uh, well, that's what a Nazi would say. Yeah, uh, you're actually, that's what a Nazi would say. You totally, you're a complete Nazi. Don't you, you push Nazi propaganda and ideas in the work that you produce. You are all about, you, look at how you follow. That is always the go-to after it. It's like step five and six after, lol, you like hentai. Lol, you're a pedophile because you like hentai and anime. Lol, you have an anime profile okay. picture. And lol, lol you are follow a on Twitter. Or lol, we only have one Nazi in this chat room, and it, he's at the bottom. Where he belongs. Look, look to be honest, uh, I've actually went so high, I circled back. So, <laughs> overflow. You know, it's pretty <laughs> funny because the actual definition of a Nazi is a fascist who wants a white nationalist ethno state. Ninety percent of the people who get called a Nazi on Twitter are just moderates or just normal left or right wing people. Like they are completely within the political like mainstream. Close the window. Sorry about the noise. Mm-hmm. Guys, oh, I'm the fourth result if you Google Nazi femboy chats telling me. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you? It is so like, proud. Were people, were people aware that there is actually a unironic Nazi femboy movement that is taken over the alt right? Oh, word. Yeah. Is it Cafe are, Beef? Are uh, I bet sh- it's entirely him. I was going to say, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this actually happened. I, I saw this along with everything. I, we can talk about that later if we want to, but we got we to gotta stay on topic. So. Those first, those two things are things that happen a lot, right? And then you start talking about the third kind. Now you start getting into people who are like the face of these movements, people who have the actual platform that they can point their finger at someone and say, cancel him. And people will immediately follow and obey. You've got, you've got bread tubes on the top of that, right? You've got people like Anna Valens. You've got people like Max DeSaggio. You've got people like Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn. And even when the people are not specifically trans, they have such power that it will be then considered as gospel because they have the platform. Therefore, how can you deny them? They have, they have business. They're in the industry. They are known by these people. They have all these connections. And even if they are not known to have these connections, it's kind of like the difference between uh, Mags Visaggio and Mallory Desiguchias because people know that the bullshit that's going to probably come out of the mouth of somebody like, say, Casey Explosion is going to be something that is puppeted and repeated by Max Visaggio because that's what actually happened during the thing with Mallory 2 Electric Boogaloo when Mallory said it's fine trans people rob all the Aren't time. Aren't they all friends? Like they're all I think friends. So. <laughs> yeah. I think so. But um it's uh, like, like a, it's like a hive mind, population. dude. It's it's very much like a hive mind. Um, yeah, exactly. When that happened, when that happened, the first thing that happened was one, everybody was repeating the same 
words from Casey Explosion. And Casey's entire take was, this is just directed as hatred against trans people because they don't want to admit that trans people are, dis are abused on the lower half of society. And no then one, Mac no one knew Mallory was trans when this happened. You know nobody, the funny thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back yeah. in January, nobody knew that she was even trans yeah. to begin with. They mm -hmm. were just dunking on how fucking uh, uh, masked oh. off the yeah. work was. And then yeah. they were like, you I'm an Algerian. I showed on everyone equally. I mean, I um, knew she was trans for like five years, but I think you're talking general. Yes, in um, general. People did not know who oh, she okay. was. Uh, this was back in January when yeah. it was about the the, the, uh, the new guy comic Pie. yes yeah. a lot of the people sat up and said oh that's actually shit because their excuse was uh we got harassed because it was tweeted by uh oni plays and oni plays doesn't he, he's just a harasser he's just doing this because he wanted to torture her on the timeline it's like no he thought the art looked like shit so he said the art looked like shit you know the only place well King. And the sad the, thing about Oni is I saw like an industry animator that's like, I'm friends with Oni because I don't really mind that he's edgy, but I know most of my coworkers aren't fine with that. And that made me sad because supposedly most of the animation industry does not like Oni. Because I, I saw that post a couple months ago where it was like a PA at Cartoon Network. Uh, and he's I mean, like... He had his own show. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. no, that's Psychic Pebble. That's, that's Psychic Pebble. Uh, that is um... But okay. only only was involved with it. But I saw like a PA at Cartoon Network who's like, uh, if you draw in this style, you're the new ground style. You're like a racist misogynist or something. <laughs> yes. And then in the that's like a that's like a Twitter take. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. And then in the replies, he's like, uh, he was clearly referring to Psychic Pebbles and Oni. Now Psychic Pebbles has a show on Adult Swim uh, along mm -hmm. with uh, Cusack. I think his name is Sick Animation. Uh, but. I've noticed a lot of animosity towards both Psychic Pebbles and Oni, which is weird because they're both fairly successful. You have to remember they almost got Hellbenders picked up at Adult Swim a couple of years ago. It was, only, re it was only rejected because they also greenlit uh, Mr. Pickles at the same time, and they didn't want two shows with the Hell theme. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole discussion for later, because that actually breaks off to where the whole entire... Um... Newgrounds versus Cal Arts style thing happened, and then when you start talking about that, you got to start talking about RC darts, and that's a whole like discussion in and of itself. Well, it does bring to mind an interesting like class issue because I saw some animator who works <laughs> at a studio, and he's like, uh, I know a lot of wonderful people at Cal Arts, I do too, but he's like, I know a lot of wonderful people who went there, but people aren't getting this a class issue, class issue because to go to Cal Arts, you need to either have rich parents or go into massive amounts of debt, but a lot of the people who started on uh, new grounds like Psychic Pebbles or Harry Partridge or Stamper, a lot of them are poor or were homeless. So they're the poor self-educated. So uh, they view it as the poor self-educated versus a bourgeois fake neoliberal who goes to like a private art school. So it is a little bit of a class issue, I think. There might, that might be why there's some animosity. That only makes it worse that uh, it would be the case that um. Why is his name not coming to mind right now? Wow. Um, I probably know his name. But Newgrounds yeah, has a very yeah, libertarian yeah. slant and a very anti-censorship yeah. slant. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like in that same vein because Aaron would be somebody who came from Newgrounds that then immediately turned on his friends the second he got enough clout to. He betrayed his people. Is what you're saying? Yeah. He betrayed yeah. his people. <laughs> Aaron he Hansen. Out like the fucking Zudas he was. And Aaron Hansen sold, killed then sold, Ego Raptor. And then sold, <laughs> and then sold their dead ass. He he literally pulled a fucking um. He pulled a Fight Club. He 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 took the car. He took their thing and then took the fat of all of these rich cows that he wanted to pander to, and then sold their fat asses. Which is to say, they sold their ideas, their politics, their their Fujoshi way of thinking back to them. In the form of something like Dream Daddy, that when he got called out about it by people who were friends, uh, uh, who are friends of Oni, uh, about how they felt, about how that made them feel as gay men, and he was making a game about pandering to those groups of people with those ideologies. Like, wasn't that Ding Dong and Julian? Yes, Ding Dong and Julian. Um, when they talked about that, that was one of the biggest things that a lot of people took umbrage with. And when it was brought up and made serious, it was like, ah, uh, well, ah. Uh, shit because he didn't have anything to say to it because he couldn't say that there wasn't and there are plenty of people who latched onto it 
and that's like the divide between those two different choices between the people who subscribe to this idea you have the people who are relatively unknown who have a lot of power but nobody knows that they do and it's kind of like a trap card a literal trap card where if you mention them boom you're dead and then you have the people who are the figureheads, the Wolkskulls, the people who are well-known, whose names are loudly and proudly displayed, going back to Mallory, that when something happens, the first thing they do is they open their mouth and say, um, that right there, that discussion, that topic, that's the kind of bigotry that we face all the time, whether or not they're trans or not. Because if they're trans, they say, that's the kind of bigotry that we face here in the trans community because it pushes these heteropatriarchal cis ideas of white power down on us because we as the underprivileged do not get the ability to speak on issues and topics and then out of the word works you just happen to see this person who uses a name like lactitia this sissy uh trans woman who is wait hold on say that again lactitia lactitia I do not this like is, that is, name. This, I just this, want to put that out there. This is, uh, this is a deep cut. This is a deep cut. Um, there's this group of people that are that are trans women, that be, men who have become women, who subscribe to this idea of being uh, queens of spade, which is women oh, engaged why, 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 why? Hold on, what? The, what there what, are people what? who engage in this what? fetish. Wait, let, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. Okay. Um, you take it. Yeah. Oh, you're okay. an expert on this. Is that what I'm getting? Well, I, I, I think yeah. he has this fetish. I think Poe well, has this fetish. No, Queen of Spades and uh, Snow Bunnies are basically imagine like you know those white girls who have like uh, on their bios, oh, uh, only dates black boys or whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. Those, those, are, those, those are those are Snow Bunnies. First of all, they're like baby Queen of Spades. Snow Bunnies actively go after and only date black guys, and. It's like a, it's like it's, it's their fetish. Like they don't realize they have a fetish, or maybe they do, but it's their fetish. Queen of Spades take it to another level. They fully are aware it's a fetish and they accept it. Some get like tattoos of spades on their uh, on their body somewhere, and they just like they go ham into fucking black guys. Like it's just like it's it's like a disease. Like they just they can like. <laughs> an entire uh, room of and this is coming guys. from a black man keep in mind so yeah <laughs> like... it's it's literally like they'll have like they have queen of spades they literally have queen of spades they have queen of spades a face mask now and i literally saw a bunch that were sold out on ebay at the beginning of uh at the beginning of the lockdown the beginning of the lockdown and i'm like how how quickly did these bitches buy these masks <laughs> How quick, you gotta how represent many of them? your love for black cock, you know what I mean? And I mean a lot of your DMs are making more sense now, pal. You no, know, on, 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 on my old account, call in those women. On my old account, I literally once I posted that uh, that thread about uh, Queen of Spades and uh, all that stuff. I, I so many tweets I got from like Queen of Spades and like Snow Bunnies, and it was just hella weird because these were like these women were as old as my mom, and I'm like. Mm -hmm. Do you feel weird. weird that uh, a large, maybe a large, a decent number of white women all like fetishize people like you? Yes, it's very weird. It is I'm weird. very uncomfortable it's weird. with it. Yeah. It's, very, it's very uncomfortable because on the one hand, especially as a black <laughs> male, you were like, okay, this is who, oh, 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 oh this is nice. This is nice. It, it, you, it feels nice at first. It feels nice at first. It's free poon, like. Yeah. I like, completely disagree. But on the these other hand, like, you're an object to them. Like, like yes, yes. On one hand, it's like, oh, these women actually treat me like I'm a god king. They're they're rubbing my feet. They're cooking me meals. They're giving me food. They're giving me money. These husbands are letting me fuck their wives. It's Wait, is this me. coming from experience? Yes. Well, his. I don't know about that. <laughs> well then. But but then on the other hand, it's like you. They, sometimes you just look at them. Like, you're just talking to them sometimes, and you look in their eyes, and you can see the heartbeat thumping in their eyes and in their throat. Like, <laughs> they, 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 they need you. They need the coal to go into the engine so they well, can get That's a stereotype, hot. right? Okay. Yes. But that's probably not a bad thing. If you consider if that if it wasn't about race, if it had nothing to do with race and just the fact that a woman was attracted to you, would that be okay? Just out of yeah. curiosity. Yeah, that's fine. Like, yes, okay. Okay. It's, it's uh, not just attraction. It's like they, they look at you like an animal that just wants to fuck. That's, that's I, I mean, I, I know from <laughs> some experience. I'm pretty sure uh, that... 
Dimitri I, and I are sorry. You're, you're allowed to look at a man like he's a piece of meat if he's yours. <laughs> it's different. Though. I don't even it's know what sex is. So. I was actually going to say that Poe gonna... and Carl are completely wrong and that the ideal man is five foot two and chubby like Dimitri and I. Oh, I huh? think that's actually the ideal man. This man, it's not that chubby. This, this this woman is a follower of the essence. I will not submit this slander to happen on stream. I will fight against this Slanesian propaganda. Um, I I pretty sure um I and uh, I can speak to this extent, not in terms of race, but in terms of identity. I guess Dimitri, I'm sure. Yeah, I was gonna uh, go there. Can... You weren't go for huh? it. Yeah, I was oh, gonna go there out? too. So no, oh, I was gonna yeah. say I was going to go there, but go for it. Sorry. Um, no. But yeah, like, sometimes I get DMs from certain individuals that uh, either entail genitalia or just ha are really, like, blunt, I would say. <laughs> like, or how blunt are we talking? Incredibly like, forward. Like, and they what? will, like, say, like, oh, I'm very interested in you, or, like, I, I can just, like, straight up <laughs> bust out a DM if you really want to, but, like... <laughs> I'll I've, only it, gotten like... a I've only gotten a couple of horny DMs. I remember tweeting that I was horny like six months ago, and a bunch of older men sent me dick pics, but aside from that, I haven't really gotten any. A I don't lot think of them... I've ever seen anyone be horny for me. So a lot of them relate. are from trans lesbians. Have you seen your, any reply to your tweet, Dimitri? <laughs> Look at me in I the eyes. Not... <laughs> out, I think. I have no idea what you could be referring to. Oh, I was saying most of my horny DMs come from trans lesbians. Oh. Well then. They're they're usually the most uh aggressive. Yeah. In my experience. So are we gonna loop back to pink going? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Because we have it. We keep yeah. saying we're going to. Because <laughs> I'm fine talking about either, but uh Carl was talking I, about. I think we kinda got the point home. Power. But, we, oh, we got okay. the point. We got the point down, though. Okay. Like, the three, the, the the things that I'm trying to make clear here, because it, it all interconnects, honestly. Because the point I was trying to make there about that is that there will be people who will come out and they'll say these things, and then out of the woodworks, with no, out of literally nowhere, kind of like the way that it feels to be a member of the actual big gay lobby, when you see people say things like, "Yes, I would like to have the ability to go to a business and not be harassed that I'm with my husband or with my wife." and I want to be accepted out of nowhere from the woodworks. These people with names like Letitia will come up saying, yes, sister, I believe in you. We need to have a consolidation, reparations. They need to give us what we need. And people turn around and look like them, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Who wants to talk to you? Get the fuck out of here. And that's kind of what a lot of the, the things kind of wrap around to. Because when you start talking about these things, it's kind of like that. They'll stand up on a stage and they'll say this shit with confidence about uh, about topics inside of the trans community as a whole or just in the bigger mainstream lgbt community as a whole and they'll that's talk about pretty things. salient yeah, uh, a lot of the people that you're talking about a lot of them are very affluent some of them are in hollywood <laughs> they're in a much different spot socioeconomically than a normal let's say a normal trans woman in indiana who just wants to transition and be accepted and live her life they're living a completely different life and that's sort of why i get a little annoyed when some like right-wing activists they get a hold of like pink pilling examples and they're like oh mm -hmm. this means mm -hmm. transitioning itself is invalid or every trans person ever is like a predator they're not mm -hmm. getting the distinction between a normal trans person and like an insane activist and uh, i just wanted to say i really like that point earlier that carl was making that a lot of people who seem to have no clout have a lot of power in an industry like for example uh you could have like zero followers but we be friends with a lot of like network or movie executives or a bunch of directors and you could uh determine who or what gets fired even if you have like zero followers it's more about connections and social media but they do go hand in hand because people do get those connections from social media but oh, my definitely. point is that my point is that people don't distinguish between a normal trans person trying to live their life and an activist and a lot of their these activists they're in a glass ceiling they're high and mighty they're in a different um socioeconomic position i can't really take the opinions of a a bourgeois like neil Lib who has like a check mark that's why people hate check marks they're all like rich journalists nobody can relate to them
Yeah, they don't actually speak for the people they're always trying to speak for. And mm-hmm. in fact, they're usually counterproductive to those people in most cases. Because it's like, how can you compare making uh, $90,000 a year being a production assistant in Los Angeles to a trans woman in bumfuck Iowa? You can't compare that uh, situation. Like, I'm sure there are challenges, but one is demonstrably better off. Uh, to bring back around to that, um, I was about to ask you a question. Uh, yep. What would you say would be the kind of political uh, environment of, say, a town like uh, Portland, Oregon, and how they would feel on that? Because a lot of people tend to see this through the viewpoint of, like, affluent people who have the platform to be able to say things and not understand the gravit- the gravitas of what they're saying. So what would you say would be the kind of environment of, say, someone who is, like, on the ground in a city like that in a place like Oregon or in any of these places like in Washington, around places like Seattle or something, or Ontario. Mm. Usually, I, can, I can speak for this because I have okay. a lot of friends in okay. that area. Um, usually the general consensus is they just follow, like it's more of like a follower culture, I would say, like instead of kind of hating the people that kind of live in those areas, like Seattle, obviously Jeff Bezos and like Portland, Oregon has a bunch of why nots and stuff. <laughs> That's how I describe it. Um, and people just kind of fo- follow, I guess. They don't really have their own ideas. They more of kind of follow with what these people say. It's like how, m- like, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Artie's but basically saying there are two kinds of people. There's followers and then people who can make up their mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And more of the, te- there tend to be more followers and like big cities and stuff i find but this is a pretty big uh point relating to pink pilling and collusion within industries or uh, power dynamics between the sexes a lot of people under pressure they just tend to follow what their perceived leader is and to carl's question my assumption is that the parts of portland near the universities they would probably be more like the activists on twitter but i do know a couple people in like san francisco who if you go away from the universities it's a little more chill Mm -hmm. okay so i ask that because a a good point that i want to make clear to the audience and people who may be tuning in and listening is like we we, we're talking about these uh, these topics and people might come away with the idea of oh so this is just some shit that doesn't actually really matter okay so they have the industries okay so they're in the schools that's fine but like they aren't hurting anyone right like the people are being bullied sure yes carl i understand i believe that but like what's the actual like control they have on this and i just sent Werner some things because now is when we start talking about how they're trying to change laws in cities like portland oregon or hey, in excuse me like what? olympia washington because you might think oh well hmm that's interesting carl do you have anything to prove what you just said cuz that's a i'm going to need some uh, i'm going to need to see some data on those jokes that you just casually made about us uh there has been a very serious coverage in places like olympia washington just washington state in general washington state is a giant like factor of this there have been multiple passes on multiple bills in places like olympia washington there have been passes on bills in places like oregon there's been bills like this inside of canada in general but canada is kind of a lost cause when it comes to this topic so they're pretty cucked on this it's been this kind of issue in alabama this kind of issue in new york this kind of issue in georgia uh south carolina uh florida nevada uh florida that's a surprise actually yeah, Florida, in my experience, is rather conservative. Yeah, it's, that's why I'm saying it's surprising. It's a, very, it's a very small knit community of people, but they they exist. They're there. They they try to push things through, but they don't. They're not as successful as in places like Washington State. And I'm gonna try and find this tweet so I can have Werner show that as well, because on screen Werner is showing examples of what I'm talking about. There are multiple kinds of bills that are being pushed through in places like the Washington State Senate, such as HB 2184-2019-20, which are, excuse me, substitute version, uh, SHB 2184. Wasn't that the bill that Jordan Peterson, like, protested against? No, this is not the bill for that. This is another bill entirely. This is the bill of Washington House House of Representatives of ESSB 5395, which is a bill 
that is saying that you should have the right and the power to force sexual education on children as young as kindergarten all the way through to senior uh, all the way to the 12th grade i have a video on this that we can also watch to go over this because a, a youtuber by the name of a helping hand at the helping hand for me I remember covered him. this in detail because when you see this you're like oh how old is that carl is that like is that like 2017 2018 no that's from march that's from march 12th 2019 last year and it's not a case of well where's the status in the bill because right now the bill was introduced in the house and is currently being held to death in committee because they do not want this to pass and the people who want it to pass are the exact same kind of people who yesterday i had a person of mine who lives in new zealand who showed me a bill about abortion that is being pushed there that would like to use corona as a smoke screen to push this kind of thing through inside of the state senates because the way that the laws work here in the u.s i don't know how it works for other places like in canada for my Quebec Canadians, or in places like the uk or in places like new zealand but here in the states you have to vote on things on certain levels you know america the only country that matters here here in america if, if things are not decided on the federal level the way that obama enshrined gay protection laws by saying blanket protection everybody can get married have fun queers if they don't do something like that it must be passed at the state level and this is where you start not hearing about these things because a lot of people think that this kind of corruption starts top down. It doesn't. It starts local and then moves into office. And then they do a technique called door stopping, where not only do they keep keeping out of people out of these places in spaces, right? Not only do they get into companies by working their way up until they get to a position like Neil Druckmann and kick somebody like Amy Hennig out of their job because they're not progressive enough. They then invite in their shit heel friends and they shut up the company so that they can push their ideals and their politics. They've That's, been trying uh... to do something like this in Washington state for as long as that. This is something that they want to have in the school system by 2022, if not 2023. They wanted to have it in by 2019 and 2020, but they Wait, weren't able to get it. Carl, could I ask? Wait, are you talking like how Anita Sarkeesian got into Google Ideas? Yes. Oh, okay. Carl, could I ask a, um, it's, it's the, a question? It's the same framework everywhere. Yes. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So you've talked a lot about like how they're doing it. You say it's a little bit sneaky. You say it's they start locally and then they spread out. You say they're kicking people out. I, I haven't heard a whole lot about what you disagree with in the bill. So like what what about this? Do what do not... I disagree with in the yeah, bill? Yeah, what, what don't on. you like about it? I will show you. Terrific. Mariner, you have a nice voice. There Thank you. Is... You're so sweet. There is you have a nice voice, too. Things in the bill. You, yeah, that you I also have a nice voice. Namely. Oh, thanks, guys. From the video and also from the video itself, where there are pieces in it where they will start trying to teach your children about sex education kind of against your will and refuse to allow you to have the ability to dissent from it if you as a parent do, want, do not want your child to be involved in it. Ultimately, I could care less because it's not my children in there. Fortunately, because I don't live in the state. But if it was my state, and if it was my children, I kind of want to have say in this. And the thing that this bill does is that they wanted to insert a rule in this bill where you, as a parent, cannot consent. You, you cannot stop this if they were to get their way and if they got that into the bill. Because the way that it was supposed to work was that uh, their parents were supposed to be notified of this kind of education happening. Because, you know, you don't want your child, when they're five years old, to learn about, you know, sex organs. Well, why not? I, yeah. don't, I don't think most people would. Why not? Yeah, why uh, not? they're kind of not. They're kids. They're, not, they're, they're kids. Like they're, they're what kids. A, what about it? So, something embarrassed. Can I just share a little story super quickly? I mean, think about it this yes. way. I mean, if if you don't want to take your no. kid to uh, a public school because you don't want them to learn a history class, right? That you don't want them to take world history in high school. Um, the school can't just excuse that. It's a required class in certain states. So you'd probably have to homeschool them. These people are trying to get this into uh, trying to get sex education into a into a um, necessary uh, point, right? It's 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 mandatory that you have to take this class. I don't see a whole lot of things wrong with that as long as it's managed well. I don't I I don't see anything in the curriculum that would suggest that it's bad or that it's harmful to the kids. Um, it set me off as a kindergarten part. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think the issue uh, with sex education is related to my trans uh, thing because I feel like some people 
are either ignorant or, or they have like good intentions, but they aren't cognizant of the whole effect of their actions. And uh, to Carl's point about Neil Druckmann at Naughty Dog, has that been uh, confirmed? Because I was reading Blood, Sweat, and Pixels by Jason Schreier, and that was basically saying Amy was forced out because Uncharted 4 had a small team because uh, mm -hmm. in 2009 when they finished Uncharted 2, they split into two teams. One did Uncharted 3, the other did the original Last of Us. Uh, they had another team do Uncharted 4. Uh, they fired her supposedly because the game wasn't shaping up well and uh, they felt like Neil and Bruce would do a better job. Uh, but uh, It's so fishy though. People usually don't fire you if development isn't for a big project isn't going well. Usually they just cancel the project. Well, but she got fired from Ragtag, which is a Star Wars game at EA for a similar reason. Uh, but the thing hmm. that I feel like there might be a little more nuance to Neil because I listened to uh, Colin Moriarty, who is a former IGN editor, and he's like a, a vocal libertarian. He, he speaks highly of Neil a lot, and he's basically been implying that his beliefs might be a little more nuanced than that. But from what I've read, I don't really know if Amy was forced out due to gender politics, but if that was, uh, that is terrible. And he, uh, well, Carl, Carl, if I sorry. remember correctly, don't people say that because when she got fired, he, he tweeted something. I don't remember at the time, but it was almost, it almost seemed like happy that she was. Well, Isn't can somebody most... blank this to me? Cause I wasn't really active on he, Twitter at the time. He did delete it, uh, right after. And I know that's why, but that's why I also don't remember it. Ah. It's just really hard. Oh, and then to Carl's point about the damage that these people do to the industry, they do damage in the sense that they are preventing people with different viewpoints from, and I'm not, not just talking about entertainment, I'm talking about like tech or like the corporate world. I would assume corporate's a little more fiscally conservative though, but with like entertainment and stuff, they're preventing people with more centrist or conservative viewpoints from getting project screenlit. Uh, so they're hurting the diversity, not just in terms of sex and race and gender, but in terms of the political oh. themes explored and the, uh, the ideas and themes. Like they're preventing people who by all means should because they have the talent to get in. And they're also, uh, they're also enacting in action because what a lot of these people m miss is that by only calling out people for sexual harassment who they selectively either want to harm or who they, they've decided should be canceled. Because uh, Liz Munev, he was only called out because the CEO of National Amusements wanted to reforce some between Viacom and CBS. She only publicized those allegations, which, which were true. She only publicized them because she wanted him out so that the uh, remerger could go easier. Uh, John Lasseter was, I assume, only outed because uh, he, he was, like, the most obvious. Like, he was always hugging people in interviews. But th the far-left activists in entertainment do not get that they are not doing anything to stop this culture of sexual abuse. It has more to do with complicit complicity and just not saying anything for the sake of a career or helping your buddy. An example like of this is Me Too, how it immediately stopped as soon as Joe Biden came became the victim of it. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, like, like Joe Biden could rape a thousand people, and I'd still vote for him. All the freaking women just, just replying, just like Joe Biden could rape me, and I wouldn't say a word. Like, well, it didn't That's just romantic. Stop. It reversed. It reversed itself. It went from you know what, rape is bad to not just rape is okay. Rape is good as long as the guy I like is raping. <laughs> <laughs> Go team. Well, okay. Guilty. <laughs> like, it seems uh, well, like everyone uh, in entertainment is guilty of sexual abuse because a lot of people in entertainment talk negatively about like men and how every sexual predator. And part of my mind goes to maybe they are speaking from experience, and every man they interact with in entertainment is like a sexual predator because all the time I read about in like animation these supposed allegations, and I'm like not sure if they're true or not. But it's like, am I really surprised? Because everybody seems like kind of a pervert. But they're not, my point is that they're not really doing anything to stop the culture of sexual abuse. So they are doing real harm. They are doing real harm by preventing conservatives and centrists and even left-wing people who don't agree with them. They're doing harm by keeping people out and they're doing harm by stopping abuse. Uh, Me Too has not really done 
much in the way of helping well, the culture. I mean, like it a, might have helped some, but I don't think it's going yeah. far enough. I, I mean, it's always been an ideology thing. It always is. It's only a tool when it's to be used against someone, and then otherwise it gets ignored. Because, mm -hmm. like, all that's going to happen from now on is I would guarantee that there's probably some feminist people in entertainment who are sexual predators. Nothing's going to happen to them because a lot of these ideological activists, they like them. And even the right wing people or the like Harvey Weinstein's or John Kay's, they're still going to get away with this because they either hold too much power or people like them. Like everyone knew about John Kay and John Lester. Everyone knew about them. Everyone, uh, everyone who was like Harvey an actor Weinstein, or yeah. producer, they knew about Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. It's great that you bring that up because I, should, I just sparked my memory about that one woman, about that show on Netflix. Was it Forever 10 or Forever 11? Yes, her name Netflix? was Julia Vickerman. And what I um, thought was the suspect about that was immediately after what? the allegations came out. Because, okay, so the story for everyone who doesn't know is Julia Vickerman uh, created uh -huh. 13 Forever. She's an anime, worked on a regular show, but she has a more blog. In like 2011, she would tweet constantly about how she wanted to fuck a little boy. Oh, I saw park. those tweets. She literally was like, oh, I'm a pedophile in these tweets. Yeah, but when uh, that came out, I saw like people like Nico Polilo who are like, well, I, uh, this cancel culture is going too far. It was clearly <laughs> only a joke. Yeah. For people who are like, I don't care if she's a rapist, she's a woman. What? Well, sending... well if just... she's cute. Yeah, I just sent a whole bunch of things to Verna right now, but Verna, the things I'm sending you right now are the things about that story that I covered myself. Uh, the whole thing about Julia Vickerman is I'm that sorry, she, you covered it? at this point, yes, I covered this. Okay. I, I did actual research into this. I, I sent you the tweets on it because okay. I also documented this when I did it. Okay. Uh, Julia Vickerman uh, allegedly sexually harassed three specific storyboard artists. Two of them are women. One of them is a man. Mike Bertino. Megan Tryon and Felicia Fuentes while doing work for Adult Swim on I forget what the street is called okay. the one that they feature all the time that Adult Swim is made on like the, Rick and Morty? Production. No, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, Morty. things like that but like actual street you, Morty. in California like that, that actual street I can't remember what it's oh, called Oh, William like, Street that, William Morty Street. Penis. Yes, William Street, William street She yeah. did work at William Street and also did hmm. work at Netflix while working on that show and this is the I believe he was that. actually fired because I was reading the yes. uh, the former yes. Animation Guild has a blog. His name is Steve Hewlett. On his blog, he said that she got fired because of a lawsuit or dispute relating to sexual assault. And I think a few other industry animators had said that on Twitter. I didn't know the specific people, but I am aware that she got fired and replaced later on. I believe she was replaced by the head writer, who's the voice of the butt witch character, who rants about mm -hmm. hetero normative, normative V, which is yes. funny. But she got replaced by the head writer. Yes, because in this in this case, almost literally nobody knows about it because it is so far buried in, in inside of the legal system that right now it doesn't even have her name on it. It's just listed under case number uh, 19SMCV00330 uh, as Cartel Entertainment LLC at all versus Pioni Entertainment LLC, and it doesn't have her name on it. It's listed in filing for the Santa Monica Courthouse that was in February 2019, or 20, uh, February 19th, 2019, under other complaint, non-tort, non-complex general jurisdiction, with the status being a request for dismissal before trial to not allow ADR for more than 60 days during ADR in oh, gosh, April 10th of 2019, because everybody was trying to keep this from being talked about because nobody wanted to mention the fact that there was actual evidence supplied by all parties involved that she did this shit and they said no we just fire her quietly just well, push well yeah if i inside. if i was a company i would fire her quietly too i don't want <laughs> i don't want this, sexual yeah. harassment on my company what yeah you would have this seems like a reasonable many... thing to do like just yeah. right. quietly if, if you can the thing is is that i'm sorry go ahead go if ahead. you can oh you would have shit. to wonder how many how many of these sexual harassment suits cartoon network has had to file because in addition to Vickerman, they had Chris Savino, who allegedly got fired because he was sending uh, dick pictures to people on Loud House. And he, uh, Gendy Tartakovsky created Samurai Jack in like 2001. So he took over on Dexter's Lab and then he took over from Craig McCracken on Powerpuff. So he was running a show at Cartoon Network. So you would have to assume he's probably 
they probably had a couple of lawsuits about him, not to mention other people. Um, and let's not forget about the power, uh, the Powerpuff Girls writer who made himself into a self-insert character in his show well, just to date Blossom. I don't know if it's fair to accuse him of anything, but I would assume Savino has probably had some suits against him because some of the allegations were specifically saying uh, that it started when he was working on Samurai Jack as a board artist, I believe. Um, Why do the creepiest people get into the best positions? Uh, power, manipulation, take your pick. But I bring it up because, of course, a company would try to keep something like that on the hush-hush. But the thing that I keep seeing with these kinds of groups is that when this shit happens to their side, they will immediately sit there and say nothing and be like, uh, what are you talking about? I don't see what you're talking about. Well, it's in their best interest to do so. I mean, not to protect yeah. the predator, but to protect the company. So, yeah, it's, it's understandable. It's like I said earlier. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's like a couple earlier, people you know, told me about John Kay a couple of years before that became public, and I didn't want to talk about it because people were trying to prosecute him. See, yeah. I heard about that, and I couldn't be able to get anything on that because nobody wanted to give me anything on that. I oh, I can give you. I can give you some okay. stuff. Send send that to my send that send that to my DMs. But yeah, sure. like when it, whenever when it, it's it's like it's the same thing with me too, especially with Joe Biden, because Joe Biden killed me too. Let's let's just talk about that. Like, Joe Biden is it, inexcusable. He killed, in my opinion. <laughs> he, he killed it dead. He he walked up behind it. He sniffed her neck, and then he took a full on whiff of her crap because. The second it becomes politically expedient and financially lucrative to not talk about this problem or to just try to silently bury it, and the only way that you hear about it is if you follow the local news or if you are able to pick up those pieces and talk to those people that are in the industry, if they even give you a gleam to it. It's, it's, like, it's like looking at an elder's abomination. Once you witness it, you can't unsee it because it's like everywhere. My, fa my favorite joe biden clip is the one where he's talking about the the kids in the pool and them rubbing his legs the leg hair thing yeah that Trump one made a meme about it does anyone actually support biden in this chat right now no no, that, no. no. i would i would have laughed <laughs> riding with biden <laughs> where are we so going honest. nobody knows well, I'm probably going to vote for John McAfee if he's still running because he's a pretty colorful guy. I don't know if he got the nomination. I think Vermin Supreme might have gotten the Libertarian nom nomination. If Vermin but if it's McAfee, I'm going to vote A toothbrush in every mouth. And, uh, and everybody gets a fucking pony, my dude. Gets a pony. Hell yeah. <laughs> if you disagree well, with I personally am going to vote for nobody. It's the good future. Actually, I'm going to probably vote for voiceover Pete. <laughs> Allegedly, he's going to put he put his name into the candidacy just for a joke. Amazing. Oh, I love Pete. He's the best. So, well, this this oh, whole oh. this whole this whole discussion has gone for a while. It's, we're already past 90 minutes. Yeah. So, um, I think we Can should wrap, wrap it up. up. I think we should wrap yeah. it up about now. So uh, right. thank you guys for coming on. Uh, we really appreciate everything. This was a great conversation. And um, <laughs> uh, Carl, you want to anything else you want to add before we sign off? Uh, Burner asked a question about what was the thing that I opposed to this, and why was the reason sure. why I, I why I bring it up. And I gave you some material, and I want you to scroll up because it's after it's before the things, but flush for shard. I bring it up because there are multiple examples in just local school systems involving people like Angela Falarka, a teacher who was hired by the school system of UC Berkeley, or just Berkeley in general, to teach kids. And she was bringing kids to Antifa rallies and was indoctrinating them to, to, to do these things. Is you know, that what they're going to the be teaching that... in, in these no. kindergarten classes? No, that's not, classes. That is, no, that is okay. not what they're teaching in these <laughs> okay. classes. Just for that video, sure. for what's happening in Washington State, that's in the Helping Hand video that I gave you. Washington State Senate wants to indoctrinate kids. Because okay. that's, that's a the very, level of what's... That's a very triggering title, I must say. <laughs> it's a very stigmatizing yes, it title. Um, it is. Well, I mean, my question, but, um, my question was closely related to to the schooling, to to the schooling. I don't, I don't, I don't really care much for the um for the woman that should be in jail for taking kids to. I agree with you that she she should be um punished for doing that. But I was specifically talking about the schools. Um, uh, for the schools, I have no problem with children learning about things if the parents allow this to happen, because if this were say a different country, 
like okay. oh i don't know saudi arabia and you have or rather a better case example would be the uk where okay. what happened in telford and places like that where you had islamic parents saying i don't want you to teach my children sex education in school and it was an immediate oh, oh, oh all right i'm sorry i'm sorry Habib. i'm sorry sorry Habib. Here, holy shit Awful. <laughs> over there immediate i don't want my kids to learn this if you have the right politics no questions asked we're apo- we're sorry that we even tried here in the west well we're, it's always yeah we're not the uk through the bills we don't um pushing it. we don't take religion into consideration when we teach in school i mean if you don't like the way our public school is set up uh you don't have to participate in it at all you don't have to have your kids participate in it um if you're so well, opposed to if you're so opposed to parents not being able to choose what curriculum their children can go through then maybe you should push for the entire curriculum instead of just just sex education it seems it seems a little weird that you would only say yeah they can they can fill my kids head with whatever propaganda they want unless it has to do with their penis that's bad that's bad no that's that's not what, what i'm mean? saying and it's and it, yes i'm getting what you're saying but that's not what i'm trying to put down well, i'm not i'm okay. not trying to put down i'm pushing against the kids because guys don't let don't let them turn your kids into facts that's not what i'm saying okay what i'm saying is i would rather them not try to do this angle because these laws that i've been going through almost all of them try to bring things in under innocuous means and not even about religion well yeah well, welcome to politics my to, friend <laughs> trying to get yes trying to get them to to look at things a certain way through a certain lens and not allowing them both sides of the conversation they're specifically trying to get them to use and listen to these kind of propagandas. And in a lot of these bills, a lot of the people, kind of comp- uh, comparative to how New Zealand had a woman pushing for these extremely anti-woman abortion laws, a lot of these bills pushing for these uh, anti Anti-woman school, abortion laws. That is the most uh, buzzword thing I have heard all day, my friend. I, <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> Um, hey, if you want the bills, you can look into it. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll look in, I'll look into the bills um, if you'll send them to me. My thing with my abortion opinion. is that too extreme on the other side of a view on the issue of abortion harms everyone involved, like too stringent that a lot of the like religious conservatives have where no abortions ever, even if you're a teenager and you got like molested or the baby is like harming your health and it might kill you, like being strongly against even that that's harmful to people and it's pretty oppressive, but also being like, no, even if you're two days away from a pregnancy, you can just kill a perfectly healthy baby. That's also mm-hmm. really bad. I don't feel like either extreme is good for anyone in the long run, but uh, that's what I have to say about it. I think Post said he wants us to wrap up within a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, to, to, bring it, to bring it to the thing that I'm trying to get to is that sure. my problem is that they're trying to stop conversations, period. Nobody wants to have the conversation concerning these topics. Not about pink filling, not about the indoctrination of the youth of trying to get them to bend like they're bending Desmond Naples. They're not allowing this to happen because it's a no. Is that a you're pun? not allowed to talk about this. Who is who is they? Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, we're talking about it know. right now. I mean, I'm. I, Are they I, in three parentheses? Yeah, they. <laughs> Well, no, I, I believe what he's referring to is what I said earlier, that whenever I talk about pink pilling, I get shut down as, like, transphobic or whatever, even well, though I'm well, trying sure. to I mean, explain it as a problem if you're that's afraid, not community spread but exists. If you're I mean, you afraid can get called, called transphobic just for saying the grass is green. If you're afraid Twitter. of yeah, being yeah. called transphobic, then um, I'm sorry. Uh, I am not. Well, I mean, everything is on the internet, but I, I think course. what he's, I mean, I get actively harassed for the shit I do. So like, I believe what he's trying to say, whether it affects you or not, they do try to shut you down just at the mere mention. <sighs> it's like, we can't, we can't talk about these things if people just shut conversations down in general, period. Because I want there to be a conversation, period. I want people to have that talk. If they want to have those knock down, drag out debates and fights about it. We can do that. But that's not that's not what's happening. It's a immediate. You are not allowed to talk about it. The, the conversation is settled. End of. If you keep talking about this, we'll destroy your life. That's well, yeah, how it I mean, is on well, everything. I mean, you're you're talking. Well, you're talking about Twitter specifically, and you, Twitter is a massive. Not just Twitter. Not just Twitter specifically. Not just Twitter specifically. This is a problem that happens in every single nation state around the globe. No, well, guys, I think we're going on a bit. We're, we're going on a bit longer than we really should. It's no, 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 yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess my final point would be um, vote. And if voting doesn't work in your country, 
maybe in the United States, then maybe you should do a little more than vote in the physical side, I suppose would be my final um my final countdown. Rooftop Korean. Yes, let's put both of the candidates in the middle of the Nevada desert and the first one to die from heat stroke is the loser. No. Um My final question to you all is an age old question. Get the gear that out. many a scholar have pondered. Yes, Socrates, are gay. Aristotle. How did you figure out I was gonna ask that? <laughs> <laughs> Because it is the age-old question. Yeah. And there's the an universal answer. It's traps are the gay. 69th oh, law of physics. The traps themselves might not be gay, but to like a trap is to be gay. A little. Based... Just a little bit. At least I like that 4 chan You could say it's bisexual. Sent me. See, I'm bi, so I don't have this problem. Uh, Nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, I, I, my mastery. Nobody I feel like being cares. attracted to a trans person is objectively bi because a trans person has both no, it's pansexual. It's sexual. I, I I guess bi or pan, but it, it's objectively both. Like I I think it's a little dishonest to be like I'm straight, but I only like trans women because a lot of them have dicks. But it isn't fair to say it's gay either, uh, because they have boobs. Well, it depends on what you're referring to. Yeah, well, traps trans. aren't trans, are they? They are not. Right. They are not. Yeah. Tra traps so are not, not trans. Well, I guess it depends yeah, on how they define themselves, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Most most traps are not trans. Well, so. okay, look. Well, Here's I would the say the, the it's proper to say that traps are boys, but uh, like, no. but it's also yeah. some some well, some trans women will call themselves that. But also, I know yeah. trans women who also call themselves faggots. So it's like that's yeah. not the proper use, but they are allowed to do that. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, anyone is allowed to say the word faggot, whether you're a faggot or not. You can say it if you want. It doesn't matter. Faggot. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, I know. Yeah, but I'm just saying that. Traps are boys by like definition. Yeah, sure. Hey, okay, we're going very off topic. Let's just settle it <laughs> by saying traps are and are not gay. Traps are and gay. we'll Schrodinger's we'll trap. End... Uh, yes, Schrodinger's trap, exactly. I think we should just end it on saying Poe is gay, regardless of the answer to these other questions. Poe is gay. Poe is gay. Poe is gay and Dimitri should DM me tummy effects. Alright. Well, oh boy! Thank you all I for tuning in. Um, I hope you all have a good one. Hope you join us next time. Hey, you too. Yeah. Love you. You too. Hi, Nerner. I like your voice. Thank you. I love your I voice. Like you guys. Right.